Why do we need table manners? It does seem that there are more rules about eating at a table with others than just about anything else. Put your napkin in your lap. Don't take huge bites. Don't talk with your mouth full. Ask for something to be passed to you instead of reaching for it. Don't start eating until everyone is seated and food has been offered all around. Why do worms come out after it rains? Go outside near any patch of dirt on a warm summer afternoon after a rainfall. And you are sure to find plenty of earthworms on driveways and sidewalks. Scientists are not certain why this happens. But the worms may emerge from the soil to escape from the rainwater that has filled their tunnel homes. While earthworms require a certain amount of moisture, they can drown if they're submerged in water. Unfortunately, their escape from the rain soaked soil onto a warm driveway can also prove deadly. If the sun comes out before a worm can make it back to some dirt, it can get dried out. Why should I wash my hands before I eat? An important entrance way into your body, your mouth is connected to your digestive and respiratory systems. Germs from the outside world should be prevented as much as possible from getting inside these and other systems. Where they can cause problems, keeping your body from running as it should. When you touch things or people that are carrying germs. It is easy to transfer them to your mouth while eating. The problem can be easily solved, though. By washing your hands before you eat about 2 minutes in warm, soapy water does the trick. Why do people smoke cigarettes? People smoke cigarettes for the same reasons they do any kind of drug they like the way it makes them feel. Cigarette tobacco contains nicotine. Which is a stimulant that produces an energetic, happy feeling in some people. It can also make people feel relaxed, and for some it decreases appetite. Lots of people start smoking because they want to fit in with a certain group of friends. Or because they like the image they present when they light up a cigarette. But while smoking is legal, for those over the age of 18, it has been repeatedly proven to be highly addictive and extremely harmful. In addition to nicotine, cigarettes contain numerous harmful chemicals. Like tar and the poisonous gas carbon monoxide. Some minor, but highly unattractive. Side effects of smoking include bad breath and permanently discolored teeth and fingers. But these problems pale in comparison to the major health risks of smoking. Cigarette smoking is believed to be the cause of 90% of all cases of lung cancer.
and lung cancer causes more deaths each year than any other kind of cancer. Smoking causes many other kinds of cancers too, as well as heart disease and numerous other ailments. If women smoke while pregnant, it can cause problems for the health of the fetus. And babies who live in households where people smoke are at an increased risk of dying from sudden infant death syndrome, or SIDS. Hundreds of thousands of people die each year in the United States from smoking related illnesses and if those people had never picked up a cigarette in the first place, those illnesses could have been prevented. How does a vacuum cleaner pick up dirt? A vacuum cleaner is run by an electric motor that turns a fan at an extraordinarily high speed about 25,000 revolutions, or full turns, per minute. This spinning creates an area in front of the fan that has lower air pressure than normal a partial vacuum, from which the appliance gets its name. Surrounding air rushes into the partially empty space caused by the whirring fan, carrying small particles with it as the vacuum cleaner runs over dirty surfaces like carpet and furniture. The air usually passes through a suction head or attachment and then a filter. Where dirt and dust are trapped in a collection area that can be emptied. The rush of air continues through the fan, which blows it out of the vacuum cleaner. Do fish sleep? While fish don't sleep in quite the same way as people, scientists believe they do enter a resting state. People are generally still, with eyes closed, during sleep. Most fish don't have eyelids, so they obviously can't close their eyes to go to sleep. And some fish do seem to stop moving when they sleep, but others cannot afford to stop moving. Tuna, for example, must stay in motion because they need to have water moving constantly over their gills to get oxygen. Some fish find a nook between rocks or in a coral reef to rest in. And others actually build a nest for sleeping. When it's ready for a rest, the parrotfish releases a jelly-like substance that surrounds its body. Offering some protection while it dozes. What is secondhand smoke? Second-hand smoke is the smoke inhaled by people who are not themselves smoking but who are near others who are smoking. In the early 1990s, the United States Environmental Protection Agency declared that second-hand smoke can cause cancer and other diseases in people who have never actually smoked a cigarette themselves. As the dangers of second-hand smoke became widely known, many laws were passed in the U.S. to protect non-smokers from having to inhale another person's smoke. Some of these laws prevent people from smoking in public or government buildings. Non-smoking sections in restaurants have grown larger and larger. 
with some restaurants banning smoking altogether. As recently as 10 years ago, many people could smoke while sitting at their desks in a large office. Now such behavior is unheard of, and smokers usually have to go outside to have a cigarette. Why can't I take things that aren't mine? People can only get along together when they show care and respect for each other. Likewise, people must show care and respect for the property of others. History has shown us through its wars and invasions what chaos can be created when people take by force what isn't theirs. Everyone has personal possessions that mean a lot to them. When you take something that belongs to someone else without asking or without paying for it, it is considered stealing, and it is wrong. Grown UPS who do serious stealing end up in jail. No matter how much you want something, it is never okay to steal. Just think how bad you would feel if someone took something special that belonged to you. A lot of times you can borrow something that belongs to another person if he or she gives you permission. Take good care of the item, then, and don't forget to return it. Also be prepared to replace the item if you lose or ruin it. That is part of the deal when you borrow something. And remember, you can't expect other people to share their things with you if you don't share your things with them. When you are generous, others tend to be generous back. Sharing with one another is a great way to use and enjoy more things than you could own yourself. And everybody benefits. What is a clone? To understand cloning, we must first understand a few things about cells. All living things, from the simplest to the most complex, are made up of cells. Cells are specialized to perform a variety of functions there are muscle cells. Skin cells, nerve cells, and so on. Cells group together to form tissue. And tissues group together to make organs like the heart, liver, and kidneys. An organism grows and develops through a process called cell division. One cell divides into two. Then each of those two divides again, and so on until eventually, in the case of human beings. Trillions of cells have been produced to make up a complete living person. All cells in multicellular organisms contain a nucleus, which acts as the command center of the cell. The nucleus contains all of the organism's genetic material, including the DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid, which determines whether a rose will be red or yellow, whether a person will have curly hair or straight. The word clone can refer to a group of cells that share the same genetic material or to two or more complete organisms that are genetically identical. That means that the clone is an exact copy of one of its parents. Whereas we are made up of the combined features of both our parents. 
Cloning does occur naturally simple organisms like bacteria, for example, reproduce asexually. Which means new organisms come from only one parent and share that parent's genetic material. When humans and other animals produce identical twins. Those twins are clones of each other, though not of either parent. But the kind of cloning we hear about in school or on the news is engineered by scientists. Scientists have been conducting experiments for years in an attempt to create a complex organism that is a clone of another organism. While they had some success over the years cloning frogs and salamanders, nothing captured the world's attention like the breakthrough scientists made at the Rosslyn Institute in Scotland in 1996. After 276 failed attempts, a group of scientists led by Ian Wilmot successfully cloned a sheep, named Dolly, the first mammal ever to be cloned. The process used to create the cloned sheep, called somatic cell nuclear transfer, began with an egg cell from one sheep. The scientists destroyed that egg cell's nucleus and then injected the nucleus from the cell of another sheep into the egg cell. With a little encouragement from electronic stimulation, the donated nucleus fused with the egg cell, and the new cell began to divide. The cluster of cells was then implanted into the uterus of the sheep that had provided the egg cell. And five months later Dolly was born an exact replica not of the sheep that had carried her in the womb but of the sheep that had supplied the nucleus. While cloning mammals is very controversial, some scientists argue that it could have many benefits. Under the right circumstances, cloning could be used to increase the population of animals that are listed as endangered species. Cloning also has advantages to livestock farmers, who could use the technology to breed only high-quality animals that produce the most milk or the finest wool. What is a city? A city is a town that has grown very large. In a city, a lot of people live and work in a very small area. Cities are usually centers of manufacturing, business, government, and culture. They offer a variety of jobs and activities that attract people from farms and small villages and towns. As well as from many different places around the world. Before the Industrial Revolution, beginning in the 1800s in the United States. Most people lived and worked on farms. Now, with modern methods of agriculture that include complex machinery scientific breeding, and chemical pesticides, farms require far fewer workers. On the other hand, the need for city workers has grown. In the past 40 years the number of people in the world who live in cities has doubled to nearly two-thirds of Earth's population. In Africa, Asia, and Latin America most people are still farmers. But as the countries located there develop more modern industries, their cities will grow and fewer people will live off the land.
Where does the sun go at night? The sun doesn't go anywhere at night, it is earth that moves. Earth makes a complete rotation on its axis once every 24 hours. So half of our constantly shifting planet is always turned facing the sun. Experiencing day, while the other half is turned away from the sun, experiencing night. How do I know if I've broken a bone? Bones break when too much stress is applied by physical forces. Breaks usually occur when a person is injured playing sports, or when he or she is involved in an accident. Bone diseases can also cause breaks. With serious breaks called compound fractures you know something is wrong because the bone sticks out through the skin. And muscles and other tissue are damaged around it. But a lot of bone breaks are simple fractures. Where the bone has broken cleanly instead of splintering, and it doesn't push out through the skin. In such cases it is hard to know if you have broken a bone. Or if the pain you're feeling is caused by a pulled muscle or a sprained joint. A fractured bone usually causes a lot of pain, and the injured area may look swollen or be shaped funny. Still, the only way to tell if you have a broken bone for sure is to have it x-rayed. X-rays, shortwave radiation that can pass through flesh but not bone. Leaving a picture on photographic film or plates, can detect a break in a bone. If your bone is broken, the pieces will have to be held together in the right position in order to heal properly, growing back together as before. Sometimes a hard cast or splint is used to keep the injured body part from moving for a few weeks. Some broken bones are held together naturally, by the muscles that surround them. And in serious cases, metal screws, nails, and plates keep the ends of broken bones in place as they heal. Healing time depends on the bone broken and the age of the injured person. The bones of children heal very quickly. How does a thermos keep cold things cold and hot things hot? A thermos is also called a vacuum bottle because it uses a vacuum a space that has no air in it to keep heat. From escaping from hot things inside, it also keeps heat from getting inside to make cold things warmer. The vacuum is located in a thin space between the thermos liner and its outer wall. Where it stops the movement of heat to and from the outside air. A vacuum works in a thermos because it is empty of air, and molecules, and therefore has no conductivity. Heat is caused by the motion of molecules. Because the opening of a thermos is also tightly sealed with a stopper or lid made of a non-conductive material, no heat can escape or enter there, either. Hot food stored in a thermos can keep its heat for many hours, in the same way. Cold food can remain cold because the vacuum insulates it from the warm air surrounding the thermos. 
The linings of thermoses used to be made of glass, which is a good insulator. The linings were also coated with silver, which made them shiny and reflective. Such mirrored liners worked very well they were able to efficiently bounce. Back the invisible rays of heat energy, radiation, given off by all hot things. But there was one problem, glass thermos bottles broke easily. Today, most thermos containers are made of metal or plastic, which generally don't work quite as well. Also, because vacuums in thermoses aren't perfect they contain some air and because their lids don't seal perfectly. They cannot keep cold things cold and hot things hot forever. What makes the wind blow? Wind is simply air that moves along Earth's surface. Its speed, or velocity, is measured in miles per hour, mph, or kilometers per hour, kilometers per hour. The sun is largely responsible for wind patterns around the world. The pattern begins in the tropics around the equator where the sun heats the air, which becomes lighter and then rises. Cooler air rushes into the area where the warmed air was, and the process is repeated again and again. The heat of the sun along with the eastern movement, or rotation of Earth on its axis causes this pattern of air movement around the equator. And this pattern, in turn, affects wind patterns all over the world. Why do evergreens have needles instead of leaves? The needles of conifers, or evergreens, are really specially shaped leaves. They have the same features that normal leaves have, tiny holes or stomata through which carbon dioxide and oxygen pass. The green substance chlorophyll that allows food making through photosynthesis. And special transportation cells that move food, water, and minerals to wherever they are needed. Conifer leaves are small, narrow, and have a thick surface, though, to limit transpiration, or water loss. Evergreens usually live in dry places where it is very cold for much of the year. Their special leaves allow them to live in the far north or high in the mountains, where the ground is often frozen. These trees typical conical shape with narrow pointed tops and drooping branches also helps prevent damage during heavy snows. Conifers live in places with hot, dry summers, too. Like around the Mediterranean Sea in Europe and in the Middle East. What is the funny bone? The funny bone is not really a bone. It is actually a big nerve that runs through your forearm to the back of your elbow. When you hit that nerve in your elbow on something hard. It really hurts and sometimes causes tingling or temporary numbness in your arm.
How did my life begin? All living things are made up of cells. They are so small that you need a microscope to see them. Your body contains trillions and trillions of cells. Each part of your body is made up of different kinds of cells. Bone cells, brain cells, blood cells, and more. Each person begins life as a single fertilized cell. This single cell contains all the information needed for a new human being to grow and live. The information coded chemical instructions known as genes is found on. 23 pairs of chromosomes in the nucleus, or control center, of the cell. That special fertilized cell began with a single egg cell from your mother. Each month a woman releases a mature, or ripe, egg cell from reproductive organs called ovaries. This egg contains half the genes needed to create a new life. A man produces millions of sperm cells in reproductive organs called testes. Each sperm cell contains half the genes needed to create a new life. When a sperm cell from your father joined with and fertilized the released egg cell inside your mother's body. The cell that would become you was complete. It had all the coded instructions it needed to begin dividing and growing into a baby. Within a few hours, the fertilized cell that was you split into two complete cells. Each with a full set of genes inside. Before long the cells divided again. After five or six days a ball of hundreds of cells existed. The size of the head of a pin, this ball of cells attached to the lining of your mother's uterus. Or womb, the reproductive organ in which babies grow. There, in the nourishing lining of the uterus, the cells continued to multiply. Gradually the cells began to specialize, turning into nerve cells, muscle cells and so on. A tiny baby began to take shape. As you grew, you received nutrients and oxygen from your mother's blood through a special tube that was attached to your abdomen called the umbilical cord. After 40 weeks, between 9 and 10 months, all of your organs and body systems were developed enough to work on their own, and you were ready to enter the world. Then you made your grand entrance and were born. What is ozone? Ozone is a sharp-smelling gas that is a form of oxygen. There is a layer of ozone in the upper atmosphere, about 15 miles, 25 kilometers, above Earth. That layer helps protect us from the harmful ultraviolet rays of the, the sun. Without the ozone layer, too many of those rays would get through making it difficult for plants and animals to live. During the 1970s, scientists became aware that certain chemicals called chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, were making the ozone layer thin and even causing some holes. CFCs were used in aerosol cans, air conditioners, and refrigerators. By the mid-1990s, 
the United States and many other countries had banned the use of CFCs. Ozone also exists in the lower atmosphere. But while the ozone in the upper atmosphere is beneficial, that in the lower atmosphere causes air pollution. When sunlight interacts with the fumes from cars and trucks, ozone is the main ingredient of the smog that is produced. In large amounts, ozone can cause headaches, itchy eyes, and lung problems in people. It can also harm other animals and plants. And it damages rubber tires and the outside surfaces of buildings. Why do I get dizzy when I turn around in circles? The inner ear, also known as the labyrinth because it resembles a maze, is made of three fluid-filled tubes bent in half circles. As you move your head, the liquid in these tubes moves, too. Stirring tiny hair cells inside that send messages to your brain, telling it what you are doing. The brain takes this information, along with messages from your eyes and the muscles of your body. And tells you what movements you need to make to keep your balance. When you spin around quickly, the fluid in these tubes moves too fast and your brain gets more messages than it can process at one time. You may get dizzy, lose your balance, and even fall down before your brain catches up, making you steady again. Why do snakes always stick out their tongues? Although a snake's forked tongue darting constantly in and out of its mouth can look scary. It is actually quite harmless. Snakes repeatedly stick out their tongues not because they're rude. But because they are using their tongues to gather information. Snakes have an organ located on the roof of their mouths called Jacobson's organ. This organ processes tiny amounts of chemical substances that are picked up by the snake's flicking tongue. Each time the tongue goes out of the snake's mouth, it picks up chemicals from the air. The snake then inserts the tips of its delicate forked tongue into the two openings of Jacobson's organ. Which can analyze the chemicals to tell if a nearby animal is potential food, or perhaps an enemy. Male snakes also use their tongues as part of a courting ritual, that is, the process by which they figure out if a certain female snake is interested in mating with them. The male snake jerks his body around, snapping his tongue in and out. And if the female ignores him, he knows to keep looking for a suitable partner. If she responds favorably, he's found his mate. Why are penguins black and white? The trademark tuxedo-like coloring of penguins with their black backs and white fronts, is called countershading. This kind of coloration is found in many fish and other aquatic animals that 
swim close to the surface because it helps hide them from sight in the water. When viewed from below, the white-bellied penguin blends in with the lighter appearance of water near the surface, when seen from above. The penguin's black back can't be distinguished from the dark depths of the sea. Which dinosaurs were the smallest? When most people think of dinosaurs they picture the huge ones. Like the giant plant-eating sauropods or the large carnivores, meat-eaters, like Tyrannosaurus rex. But some dinosaurs were actually very small. The smallest of them may have been the Compsognathus. Pronounced comp sahg nuthus, which was only about as big as a chicken. What happens to old money? Hen money gets damaged or dirty or wears out. Commercial banks send the bills to one of the Federal Reserve Banks in exchange for new bills. If the Reserve Bank determines that the currency is unfit for circulation, it is destroyed. Damaged coins are returned to the treasury. While the paper used for currency is more durable than regular paper. It is still fairly delicate and can't stay in circulation very long before getting worn out. Different bills have different lifespans, smaller bills get handled more and therefore wear out sooner. A $1 bill for example, usually lasts around 18 months. While a $20 bill can be in circulation for 2 years and a $100 bill for 8 and a half years. A coin, naturally, lasts longer usually around 25 years. It isn't just Federal Reserve Banks that can provide new bills in exchange for old ones. Anybody who has money that is torn or damaged can take it to a local bank and get a new bill. As long as more than half of the original bill is intact. A bank should be able to provide a new bill of the same value. Why do people smoke cigarettes? People smoke cigarettes for the same reasons they do any kind of drug they like the way it makes them feel. Cigarette tobacco contains nicotine. Which is a stimulant that produces an energetic, happy feeling in some people. It can also make people feel relaxed, and for some it decreases appetite. Lots of people start smoking because they want to fit in with a certain group of friends. Or because they like the image they present when they light up a cigarette. But while smoking is legal, for those over the age of 18, it has been repeatedly proven to be highly addictive and extremely harmful. In addition to nicotine, Cigarettes contain numerous harmful chemicals. Like tar and the poisonous gas carbon monoxide. Some minor, but highly unattractive. Side effects of smoking include bad breath and permanently discolored teeth and fingers. 
but these problems pale in comparison to the major health risks of smoking. Cigarette smoking is believed to be the cause of 90% of all cases of lung cancer. And lung cancer causes more deaths each year than any other kind of cancer. Smoking causes many other kinds of cancers too, as well as heart disease and numerous other ailments. If women smoke while pregnant, it can cause problems for the health of the fetus. And babies who live in households where people smoke are at an increased risk of dying from sudden infant death syndrome, or SIDS. Hundreds of thousands of people die each year in the United States from smoking related illnesses and if those people had never picked up a cigarette in the first place, those illnesses could have been prevented. What is a tidal wave? Tidal waves are giant waves that hit the shore and cause coastal flooding and great damage. The name is inaccurate, however, because these waves have nothing to do with tides. The daily rise and fall of water levels of the world's great bodies of water. The cause of almost all tidal waves are earthquakes that occur beneath the ocean floor. The quake causes a deep, long wave that moves very quickly up to 500 miles, 805 kilometers, an hour. When it approaches shallow water and a coastline, the water builds up into an enormous wave that can reach up to 100 feet, 30.5 meters, in height. When it crashes ashore, it destroys everything in its path. A tidal wave is also known as a tsunami, which is a Japanese word meaning giant wave. What are barns used for? Today, the huge, airy farm structures we know as barns are used mostly to store modern farm machinery and house farm animals. But before modern farming, they had a greater number of important uses. Before the invention of threshing machines, which separate cereal grains like wheat from their stalks, the grain harvest had to be stored in barns where it would await threshing or pounding by hand during winter months. The structures had to be large and drafty for the process of winnowing, which separated straw dust from the grains after threshing. Before farmers began to raise special crops to feed their livestock during the winter, they used hay, which is dried grass, grown wild or taken from the stalks of cereal crops. Huge amounts enough to last several months had to be stored away. Hay was usually kept in barn lofts located above the main floor, where farm animals spent the winter. This high storage place allowed air to circulate around the hay, keeping it from rotting. It was convenient, too, because hay could be pulled down as needed to feed the livestock. Because farmers had to store their harvest crops in barns. They wisely cut entrance holes near their roofs, inviting barn owls to make nests there. The birds would hunt the rats and mice that liked to feed on the grain.
Do all flowers close at night? Many flowers close at night, or when the weather is cold. They start to shut as sunlight begins to fade. Studies have shown that the temperature inside a closed flower, where a plant's important reproductive structures and pollen are located, can be several degrees warmer than the surrounding air outside. In some flowers, the warmth attracts pollinating insects, who spend the night there. In the morning, when sunlight returns, flowers open again. Ready for insects and other animals to feed from them and spread their pollen. Some plants are even known to close their leaves at night. Some flowers remain closed during the day and open at night, like the evening primrose. Such flowers follow that schedule because the creatures that feed from and pollinate them like moths and bats are nocturnal, or active only at night. How do seeds become plants? Once seeds are fully developed, they need a good place to grow. If they just fell to the ground beneath their parent plant, they would struggle. Competing against each other for sunlight, water, and minerals. Most seeds need to travel, then by wind, water, or with the help of insects and other animals to better places to germinate, or start to grow into new plants. Some seeds, like those from conifer and maple trees, have wings attached. Others, like those of dandelions, have parachutes made of tiny hairs. Both features allow the seeds to be carried great distances by the wind. And they sometimes land in spots that are good for germination. Water carries other seeds to good growing places, the hard, watertight shell of a coconut. For instance, allows it to travel many miles at sea before finding a beach where conditions are suitable. For growth. Animals are great seed carriers. They take them from one place to another in their mouths. As does a squirrel preparing for winter, or sometimes seeds stick on their fur or feathers. But most often seeds travel in animals' digestive systems. Some plants grow colorful and tasty fruits, which are really just fleshy seed coverings meant to attract hungry animals. When creatures like birds, bats, raccoons, or bears eat berries and other fruits they usually swallow the seeds whole. Safe inside a hard coating, the seeds pass through unaffected by digestive juices. Appearing many hours later in animal waste. The seeds sometimes emerge in places far from their parent plants, in locations better for germination. Seeds then, sometimes have to wait a long time before they find good places to grow. Places where the sun, moisture, and temperature are right. Most seeds are designed for the weight, protected by a hard outer pod, except those of conifers. Some seeds wait years to germinate, and some just never do. But inside each seed pod is a baby plant, or embryo, and endosperm. 
a supply of starchy food that will be used for early growth if germination takes place. Then a tiny root will reach down into the soil, and a tiny green shoot will reach up, toward the light. Why do donuts have holes? A donut is a little cake fried in oil that has a hole in the middle. Since ancient times, almost all cultures have had some type of fried cake. It is believed that American author Washington Irving, who wrote the stories The Legend of Sleepy Hollow and Rip Van Winkle, came up with the name donut when he described the balls of fried. Sweetened dough made by Dutch settlers in colonial New York as doughnuts. A sea captain named Gregory Hansen is given the credit for inventing the hole in the doughnut. Legend relates that one night while Hansen was eating a fried cake and piloting his ship, a storm arose. Needing both hands free to steer. He jammed his cake over a spoke of the ship's wheel and the donut was created. The captain was so pleased with his invention that he ordered the ship's cook to put holes in the fried cakes from then on. How can their knees bend that way? The answer is, they don't. What appear to be flamingos' knees are actually their ankles. Their knees are up closer to their bodies, hidden by feathers and they are actually standing on their toes. How many bones do I have? Babies are born with about 330 bones. But many of them join together during the process of growing up, creating fewer, larger bones. Adults have 206 bones. Some PEOPLE end up with a few extra bones, though. In the arches of their feet or as an extra set of ribs in their rib cage. Many bones are shaped to protect and support soft body parts. The curved bones of your skull, for instance, enclose and protect your brain, your body's command center. The ribs form a cage that protects your heart and lungs. Your wrists, hands, ankles, and feet contain more than half the bones of your body. Usually the more bones, joints, and muscles you have in a spot, the more flexible it is. That is why you can make such small, precise movements with your hands and feet. Like tying a bow or balancing on your tiptoes. Why are there different religions? From our earliest days, many people have believed in a power or powers greater than themselves. This belief is known as religion. In ancient times, it was a way to make sense of the mysteries of the natural world. Evil spirits were thought to be responsible for bad weather and disease, for instance. 
ancient peoples felt that they had a measure of control over their lives when they made offerings and prayed to friendly spirits. Whom they believed could help them win battles or grow better crops. Even today, when people know the scientific explanations for such things as thunder or the eruption of volcanoes. Many look to religion to explain some of the other hard to understand things. That we experience as humans things like the purpose of life or the reasons for tragedies. People look to religion and powers beyond themselves for direction. About the best way to lead their lives and for the meaning behind them. While most religions spring from the same basic human need to believe in a great power or powers. The ideas, practices and traditions that religions involve can be very different. Long ago, groups of people separated by things like deserts, mountains. Or great oceans developed special religious beliefs and forms of worship that fit their unique ways of life. Some, like the ancient Greeks, built their religions around a belief in several gods. A practice called polytheism, while others, like the Jews, believed in a single god, monotheism. Great temples, shrines, and churches were built to honor these gods. And believers showed their faith through ceremonies, sacred writings, prayers, and other forms of worship. As civilizations developed and ways of traveling long distances improved. Different religions were spread by explorers, traders, settlers, and missionaries to other parts of the world. As religions spread, they were frequently changed and adapted into. Different forms that better fit the conditions and people of various lands. All the major religions of the world Judaism, Christianity, and Islam in the Middle East. Buddhism, Hinduism, and Sikhism in India, Taoism and Confucianism in China. And Shinto in Japan began in Asia before they gradually spread to other parts of the world. Christianity which is based on the teachings of Jesus Christ. Who preached in Palestine about 2000 years ago is the most widely practiced religion in the world today. What are freckles? Freckles are little spots of color that have more melanin the pigment responsible for skin, hair, and eye color than surrounding skin. They are usually seen in people who are fair. Because the color contrast between freckles and the rest of the skin is strong. What were some of the biggest meat-eating dinosaurs? For many years Tyrannosaurus rex, whose name means king of the tyrant lizards, reigned as the biggest and meanest of the carnivorous dinosaurs. At 40 feet, 12 meters, and with a head nearly 5 feet. 1.5 meters, long and teeth 6 inches, 15 centimeters, long, T. Rex was definitely not a dinosaur you'd want to meet face to face. But some dinosaur bones discovered in the early 1990s show that T. Rex was not the biggest carnivorous dinosaur ever to have terrorized the planet. Giganotosaurus, 
pronounced Jai Ga no Tosor Us. Was slightly longer at nearly 42 feet, 12.6 meters, long. It lived about 30 million years before T Rex. Scientists believe there are other ferocious meat eaters that were even larger than the Giganotosaurus. How long can trees live? It was long thought that the giant sequoias, Sequoiodendron gigantum, that grow along the middle Pacific coast of the United States were the oldest living trees in the world. Some are nearly 4,000 years old. But a few decades ago it was discovered that another conifer tree that grows in North America is even older. The bristle cone pine tree, found in Nevada, Arizona, and Southern California. The oldest known living tree of this kind is 4,600 years old. What is Earth Day? During the 1960s information about problems with the environment chemicals killing fish in waters. Air pollution damaging the atmosphere and endangering the health of all creatures. The widespread destruction of forests and other natural areas began to concern people all over the world. A country's senator named Gaylord Nelson wondered why environmental issues were so disturbing to citizens but didn't seem to be on the government's list of problems to correct. Why do a lot of old people have wrinkled skin? Skin is made up of two layers. The thin surface layer is called the epidermis. The thicker layer underneath the dermis contains sweat glands and hair follicles. New skin cells are made in the dermis, which gives your skin its firm and elastic, or stretchy, feel. When people get older, the fibers that make up skin become thinner and lose their elasticity. Places where skin is repeatedly stretched and folded from smiling or frowning. For example no longer snap back into place and lines and wrinkles form there. Constant exposure to the sun, and cigarette smoking, do serious damage to the dermis. Speeding up the normal changes that occur in skin as people get older. What is the difference between a squid and an octopus? Both are marine creatures, and both are cephalopods, a type of mollusk. An octopus has eight limbs, while a squid has ten eight arms and two long tentacles with flattened ends. Suckers line the undersides of their arms in rows, appearing also on the flattened parts of the tentacles. The tentacles are much longer than the arms and are used to capture prey and bring it to the squid's mouth. Squids can swim very fast, up to 23 miles per hour, usually backwards. And they travel in schools, unlike the slow and solitary octopus.
a squid's body is also quite different from an octopus's. While the octopus has a bell-shaped body, the squid has a long, cigar-shaped body. Its eyes, complex like those of the octopus, are located on the sides of its head. Why do rhinoceroses often have birds riding on their backs? The small birds seen on the huge backs of rhinos giant horned. Animals that come from Africa and Southern Asia are called tick birds. These birds feed on the parasites or bugs hidden in the thick. Deeply folded skin of the large animals, keeping them clean and healthy. The cries of tick birds also warn rhinos when danger is approaching. Such warnings are helpful because rhinos have very bad eyesight. What is the smallest bird? The smallest living bird is the bee hummingbird, including its beak and tail. This bird measures only about 2 inches, 5.5 centimeters, and weighs about two-thirds of an ounce, 20 grams. The more than 300 species of beautiful, brightly colored hummingbirds live throughout North and South America. They can flap their wings at amazing speeds the smaller species beat their wings. From 60 to 80 times per second and they are the only birds who can fly upside down. The special structure of their wings also enables them to fly backwards. Sideways, and straight up and down. Hummingbirds get their food by hovering over plants and inserting their long. Thin beaks into flowers to get the nectar, and insects, inside. Some can hover for close to an hour at a time. Like bees and other nectar-eating creatures, hummingbirds help to spread pollen. The dusty grains that allow fertilization in plants. The pollen clings to their feathers when they come in contact with the male parts of a flower and gets deposited in another plant's female parts, thus helping to produce new plants. Because of their unusually small size, often brilliantly colored feathers, and extraordinary methods of flying, hummingbirds are favorites with birdwatchers. Why shouldn't I pick at scabs? It's hard not to pick at scabs, which sometimes itch and pull and are annoying. But they are there for a good reason. They keep a cut or scrape protected from outside germs while it is healing. New skin cells form on the bottom of a wound first, working their way up to the surface. So the top of a cut or scrape is the last part to be repaired and the scab will be shed when it is no longer needed. When you pull off a scab before the healing process is done you may expose the wound to germs again. In addition, you may disrupt the repair process and cause more damage to tissues. Before the cut or scrape is fully healed, leaving you with an unnecessary scar.
which bird has the largest wings? The largest measured wingspan belongs to the wandering albatross. A large seabird that can be seen gliding over southern oceans. When spread, its wings can measure nearly 12 feet, 3.6 meters. Their long, narrow wings allow them to fly great distances with minimal effort. Albatrosses can glide for several hours without flapping their wings once. Their gliding ability helps them save energy. Which comes in handy when they have to fly hundreds of miles in one trip to find food for a just hatched baby. Albatrosses only come to shore for breeding. And they are unusual among birds in that the female only lays one egg each year. Most birds lay several eggs a year. Ducks can lay around 10 eggs at a time, for example. Baby albatrosses require a lot of care from their parents. It can take them almost a year to grow the feathers they need for flying. And during that time the parents must search far and wide to get food for the whole family. Albatrosses eat fish and squid, and sometimes they follow boats, looking for food scraps. At one time sailors believed that killing an albatross brought bad luck. An idea explored in the famous poem by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, The Rime of the Ancient Mariner. Others ignored that superstition, catching the birds on baited fish hooks for their meat and feathers. How do people who are deaf communicate? Deaf people have numerous ways of communicating with each other and with hearing people. Many deaf people use sign language, which is a system of hand signals that correspond to letters, words, and ideas. When deaf people must communicate with hearing people who don't know sign language, sometimes they are accompanied by an interpreter a hearing person who knows sign language. The interpreter relays the hearing person's speech to the deaf person by sign language. And then reads the deaf person's signs and speaks aloud those words to the hearing person. Some deaf people also become skilled at lip reading, in which they understand other people's speech by watching the way their mouths, faces, and bodies move when they are talking. Deaf people who live on their own rely on special devices in their homes to alert them to danger or the arrival of visitors. Many smoke detectors, telephones, and doorbells can be equipped with light signals. Vibrating devices, or for those with some hearing, very loud rings or buzzers. Dogs can also be trained to perform such functions. These hearing ear dogs alert their deaf owners whenever the phone rings or the alarm clock goes off. Deaf people can communicate by phone with the help of a telecommunication device for the deaf, TDD. These machines, which must be used at both ends of the conversation, translate spoken words into written words. The people on the phone can then read their conversation rather than hearing it. Enjoying television is also possible, with the help of a closed captioning device. Many television programs are broadcast with captions the text of 
every word spoken on the show that run along the bottom of the screen. With a special device attached to the television. These captions become visible for those who can't hear what's being said. Why do snakes shed their skins? Snakes grow rapidly when they are young, and they continue to grow throughout their lives. Their skin does not grow along with them, however. So they must shed their outer covering regularly, replacing it with a new, larger skin. Additionally, the scales covering a snake's body occasionally get damaged or wear out. All animals produce new cells to replace old, worn out parts of their outer covering. For snakes, the replacement process does not happen bit by bit. But all at once, in a process called molding, or shedding. When the new skin is ready, the outer layer begins to loosen. The snake's eyes turn a milky blue color because the skin covering the eye cap has loosened. To help get the molting started, the snake may rub its head against a rock. Pulling the skin loose from its head. It then crawls completely out of its old skin. Turning it inside out in the process and revealing its brand new skin. The new skin has the exact same pattern of scales as the old. Snakes shed more when they are young and growing quickly than when they get older. But on average a snake will mold between two and four times a year. What is the longest river in the world? The longest river in the world is the Nile River, located in Africa. From its source in the country of Burundi to its mouth on the Mediterranean Sea. It extends for 4,145 miles, 6,670 kilometers. But the world's second longest river, the Amazon, 4,007 miles, or 6,451 kilometers. Which is located in South America, is really the world's biggest river. It has more than 1,000 tributaries, or branches, and carries far more water than the Nile. What is a hurricane? A large and fierce storm, a hurricane starts in the tropical areas of the Pacific, North Atlantic, or Indian Oceans, where it gathers great quantities of moisture and thermal energy, or heat. It is circular in shape, spiraling inward toward a nearly calm center that is called the eye of the hurricane. A hurricane may blow inland, where its high winds, ranging from 75 to 200 miles 121 to 322 kilometers per hour. And hard rain can cause terrible damage and coastal flooding. A hurricane might spread over an area up to 600 miles, 966 kilometers, wide and last for well over a week. Once a hurricane moves over cooler ocean waters or land, though, it begins to lose its strength. 
in some parts of the world hurricanes are called typhoons. What is a wild flower? Wild flowers are flowering plants that grow in the wild, in their native habitats. Most of the flowers that people plant in their gardens or keep in their homes are cultivated. Which means they have been grown with the help of people rather than occurring on their own in nature. Over the past several hundred years. Gardeners and scientists have worked to gradually improve the plants that they grow. To improve a plant species, people work to germinate, or grow plants from. Only the seeds that came from the best plants, discarding the seeds of weaker, less attractive plants. Further improvement comes from hybridization, or crossbreeding. In this process, a plant that has beautiful flowers but no scent might be combined with a different plant that has dull flowers but a lovely fragrance. The hoped for result is a plant that combines the best of both plants' features, producing pretty flowers that smell nice. This kind of change occurs very slowly, over long periods of time. But the plants that people began with were plants that grew wild. Some plants grew in one part of the world, while others only grew in another part. As people began to travel more, however, they collected plants not native to their homelands, bringing them back to raise at home. Many of the plants that we buy for our gardens today originally came from far away and are the products of the breeding efforts of generations of plant experts. Wild flowers are perfectly suited to their environments. Because they have not been transported from foreign lands. They have also not been changed by plant breeding and they exist in their original state. Wild flowers grow in many different environments. Like fields, swamps, and forests, and even in your own backyard. <laughs>